Hi, and welcome to the Mrs. V Masterclass series. And I'm so excited you're here because I've got one of my favorite people with us tonight, Jean Claire. Welcome. Thank you, Scarlett, and lovely to speak with you. Yes, um, Jean has been a great um, guide in my life through many difficult periods. And so I'm very, um, I know the work that she does and the deep help that she gives to others. And, and her background, of, for those of you who don't know, she's an international clairvoyant and works with many celebrities and uh, does many kind of various on her. It's clairvoyant such as kind of a small world, but it, it's a big thing because you do so many other things ships and spiritual guidance yes definitely and I, I just feel that giving clairvoyant information to people can help them transform their lives yes. if they have the possibility of making different choices yes yes that's my little thing i love sharing with people and it's true because people go why do you go to because you know you know i love you know I, there's i'm one of the posse that we all love to visit and get the psychic uh, advice and it it is sometimes i look at it like i meant to hear this right now to help me on my journey rather than oh that's what's going to happen like use it as kind of advice yeah definitely happen. yes use it as a choice as to which way you can go and what level you like to work at and look at everything i just believe everything you do every day you need to look at and say is this in the best interest of my life and my journey and the people i love or am i doing this to make somebody else happy or make somebody else money or make somebody else feel good when you need to be the most important person in your own life and then other people will treat you that way as well obviously tonight which is all about manifestation um what is it can you just kind of introduce us to the whole concept of it and why you talk about it so fervently okay manifestation is an extremely easy process to work with now a lot of people look at their life and they think what what am i lacking you know like you, you need i hope everyone out there has a pen and paper because you need to write some of these things down even though you can i believe look at this session a bit later and take notes I think everybody needs to just look at their life and say, what, what is lacking in my life right now? What is missing in my life? And 99% of the population on the earth, or 95%, I would say, are going to say financial freedom. And financial freedom is paramount. I mean, it, it's, not, money doesn't make you happy, that's true, but money gives you the freedom to live the lifestyle that you can live and to create a space where your friends and family can feel really, really cared for and nurtured because if you're stressed financially, you're stressed in every aspect of your life and everything suffers. So I say to people, just find that one thing that bothers you the most in your life. You know, is it financial? Is it um, you know, your own home? Is it a partner you're missing? Is it love you're missing? And just look at what you really want to manifest because you can't manifest everything at once. You need to have baby steps and start to focus on one thing. It's like, okay, I want to actually manifest enough money to buy my own home and not have a mortgage. So for me, looking at that for myself personally, what I decided to do with that was to create a whole new business around manifesting larger amounts of money to manifest a home. So when I set out to do that, that was my priority. And I looked at what was missing in my life. I had, yes, a lovely relationship. I had beautiful family. Um, I have enough money to live a lifestyle and I just wanted to manifest my home. Now, this is quite some years ago. And I still do the same thing today. I still work in the same way today. So I look at, okay, I need to manifest love. So what do I need to do that? If I want to manifest love in my life, I need to look at what I'm doing that's stopping me from loving myself and being able to integrate into humanity and society and feel worthy of love. So then you need to look at, yes, what happened in the last relationship or what you decided about yourself in the last relationship. And then I, if you haven't purchased my book yet, buy my book. <laughs> in my book, I do have the seven steps. And the first one is grace and dignity. Now, if you don't have love in your life and you're angry, 
how are you going to attract a beautiful partner with the personality that you need to feel safe and nurtured and loved? You can't, if you've got inner anger in your heart or you've got a broken heart from a previous relationship, you can't expect someone to come along and fix you up. So that's the priority. You need to look at, yes, okay, I want to manifest love, but if I'm a little bit broken somewhere, I need to look at fixing myself up so that then I can have a complete picture of who I am that I know who I want to have in my life as a partner. If it's money you want to bring in and you have a business, you need to look at what's missing from your business. So as people look at their business and they think, oh, yeah, my business goes really well and I make really, really good money, but I owe a lot of money. So looking at your business to be financially free, what do you need? You need to be working from a place of integrity. You can't be angry. You need to be passionate. You need to be committed. You need to have respect for everyone that works for you. And I believe in that we all need to deal with people. So we need to prioritise our business and what we're doing and what we're good at and look at maybe two or three things that we do for other people that are amazing. You know, like, what's the amazing thing about you? What do you do the best? What, what are you most passionate about? And it may not be actually what you're good at. It may be something else. It may be something slightly mm -hmm. different. So you're going to have to convert what you're good at over to what you're passionate about and maybe mix them up together a little bit. But again, you can't do that if you don't have integrity. You can't do that if you don't come from a place within your own heart. Um, the first thing I say to people, and I do work with a lot of people in business and, and I've um, helped people make millions and billions of dollars in America in their businesses. Uh, one of those people is the gentleman who actually produced American Made with Tom Cruise. Mm. So, yes, because he was giving up when I met him and um, I worked with him for quite a long time and I used to go to America and stay in his house with him a lot and, and he worked through everything that he was dealing with. And, yes, now he's really, really successful. So what I say to people is if you have a business and you want it to be better and you want it to be like, if you want to make hundreds of thousands of dollars profit, then look at working with the very best people in the field that you need to work in. So if you need marketing and branding, you get the best person around to do that. If you need business coaching, you go to someone like, as far as I can say, look, I, I don't think you can go past uh, JT Fox. Uh, he's really expensive and he's in America, but he's right in your face. He calls all the time. He's one on one person. So JT Fox, I always recommend for business coaching or personal coaching or speaking coaching. He has changed my life in the last three months, even. Um, look at where your best revenue comes from, and that's what you work with. Okay, not what you're good at, what makes you the most money. So work at what makes you the most money. When you put some money away, then you can look at what you really, really want to do because your money's coming in automatically instead of looking at that. Yes. When you're talking about, um, you're saying to not, because I understand the thing about doing what you're passionate about and focusing, but you're actually saying something which is looking at where the money's coming from. And yes. Different. Yes. So how do you know, how do you know to go, well, I'm not really passionate about that, but the money's coming. What happens in that place? Well, see, if, okay, I'm not really passionate about doing one-on-one -on -one reading. Yeah. A lot of people know this. I've retired three times now and I'm always pulled back into this process because of people's need. And I love people and I love, I love looking at how people can transform their life and step up and be free from, you know, um, situations that they're already in. So, I have lots of things I'm really passionate about, but I don't get to do them very often because I'm always working in the field that I'm very, very good at. And it's only now, and everyone probably knows, I'm in my mid to late 60s, it's only now that I'm actually moving into what I am passionate about. And I've been working in this field, I mean, now for 30, 
30 something years um, as a clairvoyant and a spiritual life coach. So I think look at what makes you the money, work with that. And then when you're actually, when you have a free financial flow and you can make money from what you're really good at, and hopefully it's passive income, that will give you the time and freedom to then do what you're very, very passionate about. Now, the one thing that also comes with that is you can't chase the money. Now, money is the best motivator. It motivates me. It motivates all of us because we need to eat. We need to pay, you know, our utilities. We need to have a roof over our head. We need to have petrol in our car. So money is a motivator and it is something that drives us to go to work every day. But don't chase the money because you'll never catch it. Mm. It's like chasing success. You can't catch it. And money is not a tangible thing. Success is not a tangible thing. An apple is tangible. You can actually go and buy an apple and eat it, but success is not um, tangible. Money is not tangible. Don't chase it. Do what you're really good at. Do what you love doing if you can, and then the money will just come. And if you work with integrity, grace and dignity, you have respect for yourself and everyone else, you have passion and you have you know, commitment, all of those things, the money will just come and the people will come. The most important thing in any business is the client, always. It's interesting you're saying because there's a little thing that happens is when you have, I, I, I know the bit about that, don't focus on the money, focus on something that you want. What comes in my mind all the time is I go, oh, I, I don't want just that. I want a lot of things. So I never can pick one because I don't want to cut myself off from the other things, which I know you kind of, there's that weird thing that happens in your head. Is it, what is that thing? Because sometimes you go, I actually want something that will help me, but you don't know what it is. So I know some people don't know what they want either. What would you say in that case as advice? Is that that you want something? Uh, what does that mean? Oh, I've got a gecko running across my roof. You just scared me. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I have a house full of geckos and birds. And oh, um, what do you mean by you're looking for something or you want something but you don't know what it is? Is that? It's like you know, um, for, but I know for for sometimes you go. I don't know. Is that going to be the answer for me? So really, I just want to know, I want something to manifest that is going to put me in the right direction. Is it just literally saying that in that place? Because a lot of people's problems and the clients that I work with too is just that they don't really know what they want, apart from money. Money's a big thing for all of us. And I think that's what I'd like to talk a little bit more about how to help the money side. But sometimes people don't know what they want. Because one thing, I had incredible clarity and I wrote a note about it. When I wanted a honeymoon, I wanted the house, I, I had such clarity and I manifested it all because I was so clear. A lot of people actually don't have that clarity because they don't know what's going to make them happy. Is, um, is that something that you're, where you're talking about, you really have to look at yourself and what's missing? Yes, yep. definitely. Yes, because that's like, an emptiness within the self. Yeah. yeah. So if you're not, you know, I, I know everyone's had those days where we wake up and we think something's missing today, something's missing. So we go to the shopping centre and we buy something. Yeah. Okay, because it, it feels nice. We feel like, okay, yeah, yeah, that feels really good. And I feel, you know, you feel good when you buy certain things, you know, like, and you take them home and maybe a beautiful dress or a pair of shoes and you put them on. You might never wear them, but God, they feel so good when you buy them. They feel so good when you wear them around the house where you just try them on. And I think that's a little indicator of, um, yes, there is something missing within the self. But, it, but it's not the outside that we're looking at. We're looking at the inside, you know, like, the heartfelt feelings, the, the joy of giving to other people, I feel is what the clarity is about. And I also feel that we do need, <clears throat> this is a completely different subject, but I do feel we need to give up the guilt about wanting to have beautiful material. Because... We do. We, we're given a lot of guilt about wanting a beautiful house or wanting a really, really great car or wanting to have, you know, like 
amazing shoes and everything else. People do actually look at them and say, oh, wow, you know, look at what they're doing with their money and they do sort of try and, I don't know, make people feel bad because they are successful. Yeah, yeah. And I do, I do believe that's one of the first things we need to do is give up that guilt about feeling happy, about making lots of money and having an amazing lifestyle. And I think once you get past the fear, because it's fear. Okay. What's, the fear? What's the fear about? Well, it could be lots of things. It could be, um, um, you know, the fear if you're successful, you'll be different and you'll be like some of the successful people you know that you don't like. <laughs> or that if your partner is not supportive of you because they may have a fear that you're going to rise above them and not need you need you anymore, not need them anymore, sorry, mm -hmm. and you won't need them and they, they will actually lose you. So there's that fear there. There's a fear I feel um, that if we are successful, what do we do afterwards? Actually, that is... I often think about people who are really successful, win an Oscar or do that, that there's, or have a hit song, like to try and then keep up with that. Yeah. It's you know, stressful. <laughs> it is. And I went through that with Orlando a lot because he had all of those big hit movies and mm. then he couldn't find a script that he was passionate about. So he went like three years and didn't even look at a decent script or or, you know, consider making a great movie or anything. And he still struggles with that at the moment. So I, I feel that it's creating the identity of yourself and looking at having reinventions of yourself every so often as you move along the path. So if you're in business and you've been in the one business for three years, you need to step that up and reinvent the business and yourself, I believe, every two to three years. Because if not, you're going to be left behind and you're not going to have anything to move forward and work on. Mm. So you always need to renew everything, no matter what you're doing. Even if you're just doing massage, you need to keep re-educating yourself, you know, keep looking at how you can step up to another level, how you can actually work differently, how you can actually create something people can take home with them. <clears throat> is there, has there been a change? Because I know there was a lot of stuff around law of attraction and it's, you know, the feeling and... Has there been also a kind of a shift around the thinking of how to manifest now in the last 12 months? Has there been a change in how to bring forth what you want? Definitely. Definitely. And I can't really say that I love the direction it's all going in. Right. What does that mean, Jean? Um, <laughs> yeah. Be nice about it. It. <laughs> it means that a lot of... A lot of um, a lot of people out there who would normally not work in the way they're working are, are moving in a very, very commercial direction. Oh. And I just feel that, and it's got all to do with like the click funnels and the, the 20 emails you get a week from someone trying to sell you an online workshop. And there's no, there's no foundation to that. There's no one-on-one -on -one connection and you know I've done a lot of online courses in the last five years and there's been a few people that I've done them with who have been amazing but there's been people I've paid three and four and five thousand American for I've never had an email from them I, I didn't enjoy the course I emailed them and never heard anything back wow. and when I actually gave them you know like my little bit of information about what I thought I needed to complete the the courses with them I never heard anything so I feel that the people going in that direction with with their journey, you have to be very, very careful and make sure that the business has got solid foundation and that there's always a one-on-one -on -one connection. There's always a person there to talk to. There's always someone, even if it's just chatting or someone that calls and talks to your clients. Um, yeah, yeah, I just believe, yeah, it's going in a funny direction. Because I know that in the work, I can see that the face-to-face -face and the networking is, is definitely going to be the flavour because people want connection. I mean, that's what social media has done. Yeah. For. But so, okay, so if from, um, so, okay, it's going from the manifesting then, it, you were just talking about there's a change there. So is it still the same process of really feeling? What, what do you suggest to do as advice for the listeners or watchers as well um, to do to help manifest what they want? OK, 
Okay, the first thing I do when I'm working with someone with manifesting, and I do this a lot with models in New York and the girls in New York, okay? And I've just had a hairdresser, and she's one of the top hairdressers in the world, and she's been working in the industry a long time, and she was wanting to leave the industry and stop flying around the world doing all the hair for the New York fashion show and the, you know, to Rome for the fashion shows over there and all of that sort of thing because she wanted to start a family and she didn't want to be flying around the world while she's got these little babies. So I said to her, well, you need to look at building your foundation now, or this was two years ago when I first spoke to her, and then look at what you can do to make the world a better place through your work. So she actually created a beautiful product that's organic, that actually nourishes and detoxes the scalp as well as a treatment. So she's ready to launch it in the next couple of months in America. Wow. So it goes beyond her and what she's about to actually making a difference in the lives of people that she works with and the people in the world. And I think that's partly the answer. So she'll travel around, you know, introducing her product all over the world and teaching people how it works and, you know, put it in, in, putting it into different places and that will be her contribution to making the world a better place to be in. People are going to have healthier hair, you know, they're going to be able to detox all of the chemicals out of their scalp because, we do take in a lot of chemicals through our scalp and our hair and we don't realise how much we do, but we do. Um, and she's focusing not on the money that she's making, but the success of the product. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So she's not looking at how many units she has to sell. The accountant's probably doing that or her husband. But she's looking at the success of the product and how it's going to change things for her and how she can actually get it out there. And I think that's that's part of um, the old way of manifesting. Instead of her going on and doing like all, everything on Instagram or everything through emails and getting someone famous to say this product's great, she's not doing that. She's doing it the old way with solid foundations for the business, yeah. an extremely good product where she has integrity, respect, commitment, everything for, for her business. So I love that that taking that fear factor out. I think that yes. blocks it. So and it's so interesting because in the marketing area at the moment is very much about you know it's not this is what I what I have and showing people it's about people customers are going well you tell me what your values are and what you believe in I'll decide whether I invest in you. So I can see that this totally goes another step in that old fashioned way of really that foundation i love it and then also thinking beyond yourself because i know for me that's definitely what's helped me is you know which is all about passion to help people and it takes away from the money and the fear yeah yeah and every single person that you deal with is going to to look at your product or what you have and say well why should i buy your product and if i do what's in it for me what do i get you know, from your product? What do I get from working with you? What's the benefits for me? So you need to know, again, what you're really good at, how you're going to transform their lives and what they're going to get out of it as an end result. And I think that's the main factor of it. But also with that, I think one thing that we forget, and I learned this a very, very long time ago, probably 40 years ago. I can't remember whether it was Tony Robbins or someone, you know, who was really out there like 30, 35, 40 years ago, you know, and they were just starting up my bottle was all the tapes. These were tapes, not CDs. These were tapes right back when I was like, you know, a lot younger. Um, and I know we had to sit down on the chair in this classroom and we bought the tapes and I think they were like a hundred dollars at the time which was a massive amount of money back then for like 20 tapes but what what this um this presenter has said to us all at the time is just close your eyes and just relax your body and think of all the money that sits in all of the banks all around the world that nobody even ever touches Ooh. And you would be shocked at how many trillions of billions of dollars is just sitting in there. 
Wow. Well, when you connect yourself to that quantity of money and that, um, I, I guess, that expanse of, of, of wealth, then you can, you can realise that anything's possible. The best thing that I ever did for myself was go to Miami. Oh, why? Because everybody has the car, everybody has the big house on the water, and everybody has the big boat. And I'm not talking like boats, I'm talking like big yachts, big yachts. Everyone has like five car garages, you know, like the houses in Miami and the and the wealth and opulence in Miami is just unbelievable. Mm. And that really made me realise how much money there is in the world. Because in Australia, we don't have very much money. If you want to see wealth, you go to America and you go to Miami. Even in New York, you won't see it unless you go out to the Hamptons. And even then, I've been out there three or four times and stayed in houses out there. And I haven't seen anything much except they, you know, rock up in the Bentleys or whatever they, they're driving. So, or, you know, I'll like, oh, you know, hop on the private plane and we'll fly you from Los Angeles or something. But other than that, even in Los Angeles, like I've stayed in houses worth $26 million. But when you're in the house, it doesn't feel like the opulence. It doesn't feel like the wealth is there. It just feels like, yeah, a really big house, you know. Mm. So going to Miami, you can see the opulence and see the wealth and see the unlimited amounts of money that people have. It's just mind-boggling. Well, Google it up. Have a look at pictures of it. Oh, it's <laughs> only when you do think, yeah, that to some people money is just not that issue. And I know that for most of us, like, well, I don't know what the percentage is, but it is interesting to think that some people just play with it like it's nothing. But I kind of go, okay, so this was the question that I wanted to ask you is, it, with all the people that you've spoken to that have a lot of money and they're, you know, wealthy, have any shared or what was the common thread for them to actually make a shift into success or to manifest what they wanted? Was there something that they shared with you that they did or... What was, what, what do you, anything you'd like to share in that? Okay. The one thing that every single one of them shared was hard work, commitment, let go of the fear, be persistent, and Miranda's favourite saying, there's no way, there's no way. If I can see how it can be done, you do it. Right. Okay, so there's no way, there's no way. If, if that's your focus and that's your dream, there's no way, there's no way. It just happens. Yeah. But yes, the, and, and to look at, um, again, if you want to make $500,000, $700,000 a year, or even, I don't know, you know, what people want to make. Um, some people only want to make $100,000 a year and they're quite happy doing that. So if you want to actually look at making that amount of money, that's what you focus on. So you focus on, okay, I'm going to make $500,000 this year and it's, it's most of it is going to be actually passive income where I don't have to supply anything except a product I've created that is in the ether. I'm not talking about tangible products. I'm talking about products that can actually just be sold, which I guess is time. Um, and information because they're the most value commodi valuable commodities we have at this time and they're the most sell sellable things we have at this time is our, our, as our knowledge and our time and our information. And look at what you need to do to make that much money. Mm. Now, the first $100,000 you make will change your life. It's like if you set up a seminar and you're selling, you sell a thousand packages at ninety-nine dollars. I don't know how much that is. Maybe a hundred thousand mm. um, dollars. That will change your life to just make that just by being in a room. But if you want to make a million dollars in a year or two or three million, that's a different scenario. You're going to need a whole different way of working things and putting things together to make that amount of money. So it's almost oh. have, that, have that vision and then work out, because I think people get stuck in going, oh, how am I going to do that? Like the how, I know there's a plan, but is there a balance to how you look at the how? Okay, so if you want to actually make, um, say, $500,000 the first year, 
you need to actually have, because the brain, the brain can't comprehend that you want to make $500,000 for doing nothing. No. Okay. Even if it's selling your house, it, your brain's going to say, you can't make $500 just selling your house that you only paid $300,000 for. That's ridiculous. Why does the brain do that? <laughs> because that's how we're programmed to think because we weren't born into, um, we weren't, unless you like I was lucky because my grandparents were quite wealthy. So I was around that with my grand. She used to hobble around in her seventies with her mink coat and her walking stick, you know, and sometimes she put the tiara on cause she was a little, you know, funny. <laughs> so I grew up with that, that manifesting thing and being okay with that. But a lot of people haven't. So they've been told, no, that's not how it works. You have to work really, really hard or you won't make any money. Yeah. And if, when you work really, really hard, then you get paid at the end of the week and then you can have some holidays once a year. Yeah. So the brain doesn't actually comprehend that. Even children who go to really, really good private schools aren't taught about manifesting well. They're taught the basic fundamentals of get a, a really good education, go to university, then get a really, really good job and get amazing pay. So in nowhere in our systems are we taught how to manifest well. So our brain doesn't comprehend it. Even if you're from a wealthy family, sometimes there's not a lot of you know, ready cash in wealthy families. So even those children don't actually have that understanding. So you need to program your brain to understand that it's okay to make a million dollars. And how you do that is you have your big goal or your one goal that, yes, I'm going to have a business and I'm going to run, say, I don't know, camps or workshops or whatever. I'm going to do a hair expo, which one of my clients up here's just recently done. And I'm going to make $500,000. So what we did with her was we broke it down to one step, hire the room, two step, get the mailing list, three step, you know, do the Facebook ads, four step, go around to all the salons and, and get all the salon owners to pay $125 a ticket to come to the expo. And then it was another step was, was go and see Channel 7 on the Gold Coast. Another step was, I think, um, uh, get a package together to sell at the end of the expo. The other step was to get the big uh, cosmetic companies to bring their equipment to demonstrate how amazing the, the products are. So the people from the salons had not only training and information, but they also met the people who created the machines. And this is all Australian made. That's why it was so unique. So we broke it down into all these steps. And now she actually has, there are two people in the company and she now is setting up the next expo, which is three times bigger in Brisbane. Awesome. So yeah. it is like that. It's really bringing that business plan strategy of going, you know, because often we go, oh, I want that. It's pie in the sky. I'm not going to look at how I want to get it. Um, so I love that really if you just go for it and work out the house somewhere in it. So, yeah. yeah. Yes, one step at a time. So with the, okay, so with the money, which I think is the one that it's the same thing. So if you want X amount is how you're going to get it, what's the possibility of it turning up and what's the plan and don't fret too much about, well, how do I get the people? Just think about the options and look at the steps. Yes, definitely. So what are the steps if you wanted to find a relationship and manifest love in your life? Like, and I, and I, and I love how you talk about the fact that, it is about something in yourself that you have to kind of work out. But that, that can be a lifetime journey, Jean. <laughs> you know, it, can, it, can, it can, but as I say to people, they say, oh, look, sometimes people say, oh, should I stay with my partner? And I say, look, you can't leave your partner if you're broken mm. and expect someone else to come along and fix it up. It's like saying to God, like, like God, I want this but you don't give it to God, you know, like you're so busy holding on and trying to control your own life and making all your own decisions that you don't actually pray or meditate anymore because medita meditation is praying, mm. so, which I don't think a lot of people realise, but it is. It's giving your thoughts and your heart on a subconscious level to the universe so whoever's out there, which could be God, it could be a green frog, it, whatever you believe, can actually hear 
hear you and say, I see that's broken, I can mend that and I can help you release whatever it is that you need to let go of and move on and find the people. You need to ask the right people to come because you can't do it yourself. Right. Okay. So, so what is the best advice for somebody who wants a really um, a healthy relationship? You know, perhaps they're in the wrong one at the moment. So. Okay. So if someone's not in a great relationship at the moment, hmm. um, which a lot of people aren't, <laughs> I, I know this. I'm sorry, everybody, I'm laughing. Um, I have to laugh or I'll cry. Um, so if you're not in a healthy relationship at the moment, look at the role that you're playing in your existing relationship, what you're doing to get attention from your partner that you're not getting, what you're doing to them to punish them because they're not doing what you want them to do and they're not giving you what you want them to give you. And looking at how you can step back from them and accept them for who they are in their role as a person and a human being and then look at, yes, okay, this is who I am, this is, this is how I can live my life and this is what I can create for myself but I can't judge that person because they're not doing what I want them to do. So what you need to remember is that people always do to you what you do to yourself. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, so if people ignore you and don't tend to your heart, that's exactly what you're doing to yourself. Yes. If people absolutely. don't communicate to you that's what you're doing to yourself. You're not communicating intuitively to yourself. You're not listening to your own body or your own heart. And it's the same financially. This goes for the financial world as well. If you're looking to manifest money and you're not listening to whatever advice or whatever is there, it's because you're not listening to yourself. You're not trusting the process. You're not believing what you know is right. And the best way to do that is to write things down. Oh. Yes. Write things down because when you write things down, they then be begin to make sense and you can realise what's ridiculous and what isn't mm. that you know. It's all about self-trust and belief in yourself. Oh, it is. Look, everything, you know, my what I've done, all the work, it, it just comes down to self-belief. That's yeah. I, mean, I finally just got that really kind of deeply that... You know, if you don't believe in yourself, then, you know, no one else is going to and it'll just show up. But yeah, totally. So great advice. Thank you. And you've got so many of your processes in your book, uh, which is fantastic. Yes, I do. And I do have a workbook coming out soon and I do have some new cards coming out soon. Ooh, new cards. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's been amazing advice. What I wanted to see, if there's any questions for anyone, I'll just ask anyone would like to ask you any question. Please, there's a Q&A there or the chat, either one you can message before we head off. Any questions from anybody? Anybody tippy tapping? Um, no, it's great, great advice. And just I think the world of manifesting is really changing shape um, as I can see it in the world. And I think it is everybody's realising that they have to bring value. It's kind of changed, hasn't it? It used to be, yeah. isn't it? you know? Yeah, it's changed. It's changed, definitely. And you can see that with all the, you know, like even I went into a business the other day and I said to them, um, oh, you need to, um, I said, you don't have any brand. I mean, you know, I'm in branding, but there was not, nothing bigger than themselves. That's what I felt. And it felt dead. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think that's a really great advice to people just from a manifesting point of view as well. So awesome. Definitely. Yes. But just know what you want. Yes. Awesome. Know what you want. Well, I have no questions, which is great. I think everybody's processing that large amount of information. So thank you so much, Jean. You're welcome. Thank you, Scarlett. It was so wonderful to speak with you as always. Yeah, thank you. And um, good luck with everything and look forward to hearing all the news and with the book and everything. So thank you. Yes. Okay, bye. bye.